Alrighty, welcome back. We are in Matthew chapter 18 and uh, looking at a very sobering portion of scripture where Jesus warns uh, about uh, causing another person to stumble. And we defined that stumbling last time uh, as much more than just a minor little stumbling like, oops, I you know sinned slightly there and stumbled into sin and came right back out. No, this is the stumbling that Jesus is warning about, the stumbling of causing a child who believes in him to no longer believe in him by putting a temptation out there uh, that causes that child to go against what Jesus wants him to do and to begin to follow the course of sin. So now we're going to pick up in Matthew 18 and verse number 7, because uh, Jesus is elaborating a little bit more on the whole idea of s causing someone else to stumble. But before we read verse number 7, I want to point out to you, many versions of the Bible will, will, will indicate that this is the beginning of a new paragraph, like the version I'm reading from, the New American Standard does that. And then it affects, it makes verse number 8 also the beginning of a new paragraph. And then it makes verse number 10 the beginning of a new paragraph, and verse number 12 the beginning of a new paragraph. Well, that throws us, I think, off uh, the flow of this because it, it seems, although Jesus is now going to get away from the whole idea of, of uh, caring about children and using that child as an object lesson, but I want to tell you, as Jesus spoke all these words down all the way through verse number 14, at least he still had that little child standing beside him and his arms wrapped around that child. The, the subject keeps coming back to children, okay? Now, we're going to read verse number 7, but look just real quickly at verse number 10. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. See, so the subject hasn't changed, has it? Jump down to verse number 14 of Matthew 18. So it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones perish. See, so it's consistently throughout this whole section, Jesus is talking, referring it, bringing it back to children. Keep that in mind because it always helps to understand the context in which Jesus is speaking. So now, back up to verse number 7. Woe to the world because of its stumbling blocks, for it is inevitable that stumbling blocks come, but woe to that man through whom the stumbling block comes. Uh, boy, we don't want to be responsible for leading anyone astray setting an example that's a wrong example, um, you know, causing anyone to turn away from Jesus or hindering anyone from coming to Jesus. All those things are wrapped up in being a stumbling block. And so Jesus now elaborates in verse number eight, something we've actually heard him say in the Sermon on the Mount, very similar. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you, it is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be cast into the eternal fire. And so you can see the, the degree of the stumbling of what Jesus is making reference here. You know, if, if you're yielding to sin and it's going to, well, in the Sermon on the Mount, it was in the context of looking at a woman to lust for her. And Jesus said, if your eye caused you to stumble, pluck it out, throw it from you. And he said the same thing. Better for you to enter into life missing an eye than, you know, to go with both eyes into hell. Well, we know that um, the sin of lust, Jesus equated it to adultery. We know that lust can very well lead to adultery. We know that uh, no one ever committed adultery without first committing lust for the most part. So these are very serious sins because the Apostle Paul taught us that no adulterer will inherit the kingdom of God. A and uh, fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So here, I, I don't think that Jesus is warning us that just one little slip up and zingo, oh, you're going to hell. Your hand does one wrong thing. Your foot takes one wrong step and it'd be good to cut them off to stay out of hell. Otherwise you would go to hell. No, but if, if, if anything at all is causing you to stumble away from faith in Christ and stumble towards returning to sin, you need to purge it. You need to get rid of it, get it out of your life. And I've talked about this before. I don't 
don't think, and I don't think anybody hardly thinks that Jesus was speaking literally here of cutting off your hand or chopping off your foot, uh, but he's speaking in a uh, in a hyperbole, you know, exaggerating for effect to get people's attention. But the general message is, you know, if there's anything that's leading you to hell, it's not worth hanging on to, right? Right. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Anything, even if it was your hand, and if you had to cut off your hand to stay out of hell, it would be worth it. If you had to pluck out your eye, if you had to cut off your you know, foot, God forbid, to stay, if you had to, it would be worth it. But we don't believe that Jesus is saying that in a literal sense. But there are things you can get rid of you know, that are not quite so dramatic that can be just as deadly as your eye and your hand and your foot, right? I've made reference to uh, uh, the sin of lust already. Um, how many professing Christians are just uh, addicted? And I'm not talking about a stumbling thing here. I'm talking about addicted to a regular feeding on pornography, you know, and here, here's the culprit in one sense right here. They've got their computer and they've got, you know, the internet all the time and there's nobody around and, and they get into that downward spiral, you know, and that's a road that ultimately can take a person to hell, okay? And so it'd be worth not having a computer to stay out of hell, right? What's your choice? Nobody in hell saying, I'm sure glad I had my computer. It was worth it all, even though I'm in hell. No, 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 okay. So uh, let's just heed the word of Christ here and um, you know, beware of anything that causes us to stumble and beware of setting anything before anyone else that would cause them to stumble, okay? Now we're soon gonna see that uh, still in the context of Jesus talking about children, okay? And he's gonna elaborate on it even more. So I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.